Welcome to this discussion of an introduction to NRCS environmental compliance. A recurring integral part of the planning process will be to consider the environmental impacts of the proposed alternatives. As a conservation planner, you will be responsible for working through the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, process by properly citing certain categorical exclusions or approved programmatic environmental documents and determining if the proposed alternative results in significant impacts to the environment or if there are extraordinary circumstances related to categorically excluded activity. It is important that you understand appropriate actions and steps to avoid conflicts with environmental compliance law and policy. The CPA 52 documents proper considerations of laws, executive orders, and policies, and how NEPA requirements are satisfied. Before we start, think about this. How long does it take you to complete an environmental evaluation? Jot down your estimate. It will probably vary between one and six hours. I usually think about four hours. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the basic requirements of NEPA, explain the consequences of not complying with NEPA, relate the proper use of categorical exclusions or tiering from existing NEPA-approved federal documents, state the importance of a determination of extraordinary circumstances, explain the importance of the CPA 52 as NRCS's environmental evaluation tool. In the 1960s, there were many environmental issues, such as rivers catching on fire in Ohio and a debate in Florida between the Corps of Engineers and National Park Service over preserving or draining the Everglades. The National Environmental Policy Act is a law that became effective on January 1, 1970 in reaction to severe declines in the health of the natural environment that had become particularly evident during the 1960s. The National Environmental Policy Act is umbrella legislation that requires federal agencies to follow certain procedure for their actions and covers a broad range of other environmental laws. It is a procedural act, meaning that it requires that certain procedures be followed, but it does not dictate any particular result. The Act requires an evaluation of the environmental impacts of proposed action and alternatives, public involvement, documentation of that analysis, and results to help make decisions. It was written to ensure that federal decision makers take into account the environmental effects of their proposed actions and consider ways to avoid, minimize, or mitigate adverse effects before implementing the action. This is also the purpose of NRCS's environmental evaluation process. NEPA is a procedural law. We begin the process, go through the process, and come out of the process with a decision. Its intent is to inform the public of the agency's intended federal action and to ensure that informed decisions are made. The law resulted in four major outcomes. First, it created a national policy to protect the environment. It created the Council of Environmental Quality, or CEQ, which is appointed by the President to oversee federal agencies' compliance with the Act. It required each federal agency to develop regulations to implement the Act. NRCS's regulations are published in the Code of Federal Regulations at 7 CFR Section 650, and it required federal agencies to provide a detailed statement of environmental impacts for major federal actions significantly affecting the environment. In order to implement this final requirement, we need to know what a major federal action significantly affecting the environment is. A little vocabulary. Federal action. When we think of federal actions, we usually think of federal funding, FA in NRCS terms. However, there are other forms of federal assistance, such as projects and programs by the agency. These may include 
decisions to purchase easements, approval of compatible uses, approval of management activities or plans. Anytime NRCS has federal control or responsibility, it's a federal action. Providing technical assistance only is not a federal action because NRCS does not have control over whether the technical advice is implemented or have control over the standards for implementation. That does not exempt us from the NEPA process. We still complete the process and document it on a CPA 52 to show no federal action is taken. One point to keep straight is the difference between a major federal action and a federal action, and the consequences of each. A major federal action is where NRCS has control and the impacts of the action are significant. It requires an environmental impact statement. A federal action is where NRCS can, has control and the impacts are not significant. It requires an environmental assessment or can possibly be categorically excluded from having to complete an environmental assessment. So how do we determine significance? We look at the context and the intensity. Context is important because we must determine how widespread the effects of the action are. For example, do the actions evaluated in a conservation plan affect only the farm or the community, or are they more widespread? Intensity is the severity of impact. The considerations for intensity are the extraordinary circumstances, which we will discuss later. NEPA is the most comprehensive federal law that applies directly to the actions of federal agencies, but there are many other federal laws, executive orders, and policies related to environmental compliance that may be relevant to our work in NRCS. Some states have more restrictive laws. Our Environmental Compliance Documentation, CPA 52, is built to remind us to record decisions regarding these laws. Think about which of these federal environmental laws could apply to your work in your office. In the conservation planning process, we must consider all of the applicable federal laws, executive orders, and policies that apply to environmental compliance, as well as state and local laws that may apply. Let's take a look at an example. Basically, a producer applied for a farm loan through the Farm Service Agency and Small Business Administration to construct a large swine operation in the watershed of the Buffalo National River, which is a national park. FSA, in developing the environmental assessment for the project, did not follow proper pr procedures and disregarded extraordinary circumstances. After the public held protests on the local courthouse square, local environmental groups filed a lawsuit against the state director of FSA, the Secretary of Agriculture, and others. Would you consider this example a potential federal action significantly affecting the environment? We will discuss this example further later in the presentation. NEPA documents require a significant amount of time to develop. When federal agencies plan to take some action, they must create environmental assessments, or EAs, and publicly publish a Notice of Intent, or NOI. Depending on public comments and other input, they will either be able to issue a Finding of No Significant Impact, abbreviated as FONSI, or have to create an Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, with a Record of Decisions, or RODs. Notice that the Environmental Evaluation, the EE, or NRCS CPA 52, is not listed because it is not a NEPA document. It is a planning document. An Environmental Assessment, or EA, is a concise public document for which a federal agency is responsible that serves to briefly provide sufficient evidence and analysis for determining whether to prepare an Environmental Impact Statement or a finding of no significant impact, or FONSI. What is concise? Do these documents look concise to you? An environmental impact statement, 
or EIS, is a detailed, formal, written statement by the responsible federal official on the environmental impact of a proposed action, including a record of decisions. If an EA is a concise and EIS is detailed, what does that say about the time required to do an environmental impact statement? NEPA compliance is an issue that has become more important to NRCS in recent years as the agency grew in visibility. Why do we have to be concerned about NEPA when it is so consistent with what NRCS does every day, in effect, protecting the environment? Because NEPA is more than just a policy statement, it is a law. It includes some specific procedures to be sure federal agencies integrate the policy into their planning and decision making. These procedures must be followed or we can be ordered to stop our actions. Since most of our actions protect the environment and are consistent with the purpose of NEPA, the CEQ has allowed NRCS to use the environmental evaluation process. NRCS is one of the few agencies that has a process that allows us to avoid having to do an EA or an EIS for every action. Think about this. The U.S. Forest Service wants to sell some timber from a tract of Forest Service land. They do not have the environmental evaluation process, so they must develop an environmental assessment or EA. As part of that EA, they must post notices of intent in media outlets to inform the public of their intent to sell timber. If there are no complaints about cutting trees on the land, they can publish a finding of no significant impact and proceed with their actions. However, how likely is it that no one complains about cutting trees? If there are complaints, they cannot issue a finding of no significant impact and must develop an environmental impact statement. How long does it take to do an environmental assessment, or EA? Well, it varies, but an estimate is about four months. How long does it take to do an environmental impact statement, or EIS? It varies, but an estimate is four years. So how long would it take for the Forest Service to be able to conduct their timber sale? Probably in excess of four years. How long does it take to do an environmental evaluation, or CPA 52? You jotted down this number. I came up with about four hours. So how would your planning change if it took you four months to write a conservation plan? How about if it took four years to write a conservation plan? Do you see how important the environmental evaluation or CPA 52 is? If we don't follow our process, the EE or CPA 52 properly, it could be taken away. How would that affect our agency? It is your responsibility to make sure we follow our process and make sure NRCS retains the environmental evaluation process. Don't mess it up. The environmental evaluation is part of the planning process. It guides the planner through the process. It is not a NEPA document. It is a planning document that determines if further actions are needed to comply with NEPA. The EE is a site-specific document. This is important because context was part of the considerations of significance in the statement, Major Federal Actions Significantly Affecting the Environment. Keep in mind that according to regulations, NRCS must complete NEPA documents to comply with NEPA but we don't have to complete an environmental assessment for every conservation plan that we write. Only because we have been given the advantage of using the environmental evaluation process to determine that either the action, one, is not a federal action, or two, that it is categorically excluded or exempt from NEPA, or three, that actions fit the description of a previously approved EA or EIS developed for the particular program that is providing the federal funding, and no further actions are needed. If we can't document that one of these situations occur, further actions are needed and we must complete a site-specific environmental assessment. This flowchart shows the environmental evaluation process. The two possible findings from the environmental evaluation are 
further actions not needed or further actions needed. For example, if the answer to the first bullet is no, the action is not a federal action, further actions are not needed, which is finding number one on the CPA 52. If the answer to the first bullet is yes, the action is a federal action, the next step is to determine if there are extraordinary circumstances. If there are extraordinary circumstances, then the definition of major federal action significantly affecting has been met and further actions are needed, such as an EA or an EIS. That is finding number five on the CPA 52. If there are no extraordinary circumstances, the next step is determine if all the actions can be categorically excluded. If they can, further actions are not needed, which is finding number two on the CPA 52. If all of the actions cannot be categorically excluded, the next step is to determine if the actions can be tiered to an existing EA. If they can, further action is not needed, which is finding number three or four. If the actions cannot be tiered to an existing EA, further actions are needed, which is finding number five. At the national level, NRCS or USDA has identified some activities that have been determined to not either individually or cumulatively significantly affect the quality of the human environment. Because of this determination, these activities are categorically excluded from the requirement to prepare an EA or an EIS. Where extraordinary circumstances are determined to exist, the categorical exclusion will not apply. In effect, you cannot categorically exclude an action from NEPA if there are extraordinary circumstances. Anytime you see the words categorical exclusion, think excluded from the NEPA requirement to prepare an EA or EIS. There are three types of categorical exclusions. The first is restoration and conservation action categorical exclusion. There are 21 of these CEs and these are the CEs that generally apply to conservation plans. Here is a couple of the 21 CEs. Note that some of the categorical exclusions have further requirements that must be followed if the categorical exclusion is used. For example, in CE number 19, there is a requirement that activities should be undertaken when fish and wildlife are not breeding, nesting, rearing young, or during other sensitive time frames. This statement should be listed as a mitigation requirement on the environmental evaluation. The second type of CEs are the USDA categorical exclusions. Activities such as policy development, funding of programs, inventories, and educational programs are excluded. Note that these CEs do not normally apply to conservation plans. The final type of CEs are data gathering and interpretation categorical exclusions. While these categorical exclusions are important for NRCS, they don't normally apply to conservation planning. Anytime one or more categorical exclusions are used, all practices must fit a categorical exclusion or none of the practices can be categorically excluded. If there are any extraordinary circumstances, the actions cannot be categorically excluded. Part of the procedure for NRCS NEPA compliance is to complete a detailed analysis to determine the general action of our various programs. Most of our actions, practices, and programs have been studied and have Environmental Impact Statements EIS, or Environmental Assessments EA, completed. We rely on this prior work in our Environmental Evaluation, also known as our CPA 52, by tiering to an existing EA or EIS as long as the document adequately describes the effects of our actions. These documents are not site-specific. In other words, the context of the evaluation is usually the national level. Remember the statement, 
major federal actions significantly, and the context was part of the determination of significant. That's why it's important that the CPA 52 is site-specific. National programmatic NEPA documents are prepared for each new farm bill. NRCS has adopted the significance criteria as outlined in the CEQ regulations for its Extraordinary Circumstances Review required for categorical excluded activities. If any of these circumstances apply, then the actions would be considered significant. Remember the statement, major federal actions significantly affecting the environment. Let's consider our hog farm example. A 600 head hog confined animal operation was to be built in an area within one mile of a tributary to the Buffalo National River. The collected waste was to be land applied to fields in the floodplain of the tributary. The area is also a karst region with many caves, sinkholes, and springs. People were protesting the building of the system on the local courthouse square. Would any of these extraordinary circumstances apply? Remember, answering yes to any one of these questions makes the action significant. Remember the statement, major federal actions significantly affecting the environment. Anytime that definition is met, further actions such as developing an environmental assessment and possibly an environmental impact statement are required and NRCS cannot proceed with the actions until the NEPA process is complete. Let's discuss a term that may be seen in environmental law. Arbitrary and capricious is a legal term that basically means that the agency made a clear error in judgment or that there is no rational connection between the facts and the choices the agency made. If you read court cases that are brought against agencies, this term comes up over and over again. It is also defined in U.S. Code as an action not based on consideration of relevant factors. Think about this. Imagine you've bought a brand new vehicle and you're driving around the countryside in your new vehicle. You come to a railroad crossing and notice that a train is coming and is very near. You determine that there's no way that you're going to get across the track without being struck by the train. So what do you do? The logical answer would be wait for the train to pass, right? No, you pull out in front of the train. And what happens? There's a collision. You're possibly killed, injured. i tell you what happens. We have a train wreck. That is arbitrary and capricious because there was absence of irrational connections between the facts found and the choice made, a clear error of judgment, an action not based upon consideration of relevant factors. Arbitrary and capricious is a train wreck. Here's the finding of the example that was mentioned earlier. Look at the highlighted portion. The court found that the federal agencies arbitrarily and capriciously guaranteed loans to the CNH factory farm near, near the Buffalo National River. Can you say train wreck? In conservation planning, the resource concerns, including the special environmental concerns, are the relevant factors. If NRCS recommends alternatives without fully evaluating and documenting the effects on all relevant resource concerns, that's arbitrary and capricious, a train wreck. Let's review the objectives from the beginning of our presentation. Describe NEPA requirements. NEPA requires federal agencies to follow a process to make sure their actions are not major federal actions significantly affecting the environment. Since NRCS's actions are usually beneficial to the environment, we have been granted a special process to avoid having to complete NEPA documents. That process is the Environmental Evaluation, or CPA 52 process. Explain the consequences of not complying with NEPA. Federal agencies that do not comply with NEPA can be forced to stop their actions or face possible lawsuits. For NRCS, not complying with our environmental evaluation process 
could cause the agency to lose the advantage of using the environmental evaluation process and force the agency to develop environmental assessments or environmental impact statements for each conservation plan that we write. Relate the proper use of a categorical exclusion or tiering from an existing NEPA approved federal document. If the categorical exclusion or exclusions adequately describe the effects of all the practices and there are no extraordinary circumstances, CEs are sufficient to show that the effects do not significantly affect the environment. If none of the categorical exclusions adequately describe the effects of all of the practices, but approved NEPA documents such as programmatic EAs or EISs adequately describe those effects, the actions can be tiered to the programmatic EA or EIS. Remember that the programmatic NEPA documents are nationwide in scope, so the CPA 52 must document the site-specific effects. State the importance of a determination of extraordinary circumstances. Determining whether or not extraordinary circumstances exist is the basis for determining significance in the statement, major federal actions significantly affecting the environment, and could determine if the environmental evaluation process is sufficient or there is a need for further actions, such as an environmental assessment or environmental impact statement. Explain the importance of the CPA 52. Even though the environmental evaluation process is time consuming for the planner, it is a greatly streamlined process compared to the NEPA process that other agencies must follow. Chances are that if NRCS had to follow the NEPA process for each conservation plan, it would be doubtful that our agency could continue to develop conservation plans. Remember, it is your responsibility to follow the CPA 52 process to avoid the possibility of losing that critical time-saving process for planning.